So welcome. This is, uh, I believe, I forget now. Whoo, week three, week three, week four, week four of First Peter, and uh, <clears throat> I am not looking forward to it tonight. I'll just go through the whole thing here. So we're doing the book of First Peter, and the the whole thing, the whole Bible study on First Peter is called "Hope in a in a World That Is Not Our Own." And tonight we are going to be talking about uh, the conduct. And I know it gets fading off to the TV here because I've tried to smash a whole bunch of stuff in. But it's conduct of God's people in the midst of suffering. That's going to be this week and next week. So this is part one. And this what you can't see down here. And this is why I'm not really looking at forward to it. But this is part one. And it's submitting to authority. I know everybody's excited to start that. So. Um, let's begin with prayer and we'll jump in. So here we go. Uh, Father, we thank you for all the good things that you do for us, Lord. We ask you that you uh, come and be our teacher tonight as, as we study your word. I ask you for those people who are watching on uh, the internet that you uh, go and you just be with them also, Lord, and give us that wisdom and understanding that you promised us. And while we are praying, Lord, we have a dear friend of ours that is uh, going through some physical needs. And so we just ask you, Father, that you send the Holy Spirit and just touch Slim where he's at right now and and be with him, be with him tomorrow and uh, just be with him through the whole procedure. And and we we rest on you and we give you glory and honor and praise because we have peace because that we know that your will will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. So we love you, Lord, and we give you all the glory and all the credit for anything good here that's done. So in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. So uh, real quick, we'll do this. This is our whole layout for the first Peter. And uh, we did the greetings and we did a whole lot about who Peter was and who he was writing to. We did uh, um, praise because of hope. And uh, basically, if I, if I can do a real quick reminder that Peter is almost like a drill instructor here. He's trying to teach these believers how to survive in a cruel, dark world, even during suffering. So he's teaching us that we have hope at the end of the line on the, on the last day, as he says. And then last week we did the, our, our new identities as believers. And this is where we move into to tonight is the conduct of God's people in the midst of suffering. We'll spend two weeks here and and we'll finish one week. So we're two weeks away from finishing first Peter. But just some instructions to the church leaders and to the rest of us, the laity, also during the midst of suffering. So you can see that there's a whole lot of about suffering here in first Peter and, and the suffering is church is persecution, religious persecution. And <clears throat> this is how I, how I started out tonight. I put tonight we are going to discuss one of the most unpopular subjects there is. And as a matter of fact, I've already had two arguments. <laughs> I was telling Roy and Kevin this. I've already had two arguments over this Bible study and I haven't even taught it yet. This was me doing notes. Right. So already two more arguments. So um this is how I'm reading it exactly from my notes. Let's just all take a deep breath and, and don't bow up in the back on me because <laughs> I'm going to talk about submitting to authority. And, and <clears throat> I know it's not one of our favorite subjects, but I started out with looking up what the uh, definition of submitting was or to submit. And it starts off. It isn't too bad to submit. It means to accept or yield to a superior force. So we as believers, we we see that as God. That's the superior force. And we don't have too much of a trouble uh, submitting to him. Am I correct on that? Can I assume that? Because, you know, I do this in prayer. I say, Lord, I wouldn't even be the dirt underneath your feet unless you said I could be. You know, that's submission. OK. I don't have too much problem with this, but this isn't the whole definition because there's an or in this. <laughs> I cut it off at the or. The or is or to the authority or will of another person. I was expecting to hear some of that. 
I said, now, now it gets a whole lot harder because now our definition isn't asking us to submit just to a superior force uh, uh, that we know of as God. But now we're asking us as human beings to submit ourselves to another human being. And this flies up in, I'm reading this straight from my notes. This, this flies up into all of our faces. And uh, some of you who, who read ahead, anybody read ahead? Yeah, you might know what's coming up. <clears throat> some of you might already feel your blood pressure going up. Relax. We're just going to talk Bible here. And, and I'm telling you right now, I'm going to do my very best not to be smart aleck on any of these stuff. Because this is sensitive. <laughs> this is sensitive uh, subject uh, of submitting, right? So um, it, I, I, there's whispering going on. So, right, so you know, don't nobody throw nothing at me. I'm just going to teach you the Bible, okay? So, <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to say that more than once. I'm just trying to be a good Bible teacher here, okay? So here I go. <laughs> I, I, I'm again straight from my notes. I just ask that you realize that I do not like this subject either. Because we're going to talk about submission. I don't care for submitting to another person either. Right. I have no problem submitting to God to another person. Different story. But I'm going to if I'm going to teach us through the New Testament, I can't dodge this section. I can't just go around it because I don't like it. Right. Well, I don't like this subject. And you know who else don't like this subject? Peter. You can tell by the way he starts that he's not really happy about doing this either. And that's how I, right from verse 11, this is where we're going to take off. First uh, Peter chapter two, verse 11. But you, you are going to see that Peter begins this section on submission by, or submitting. And he's going to start it off with telling us why it is important. So he's not going to come out and he's just say, hey, you need to do this. He's going to he's going to ease into the subject, so to say. Right. So remember, again, he's the drill instructor and he's telling us something for our own good. Did you hear that part? OK. I'm still alive. There's a pool at work. <laughs> so I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Here we go. First Peter chapter two, verse 11. Remember, this is all about submitting. And it says, dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. So you can tell that he's trying to do a few things here. First of all, he's telling you that that. Um, that there, there is something in your life that is going to wage war against your very souls. Now, I know that the love of money is the root of all evil, but I take sin to a different down to a different common denominator. If you remember that from math class in, in high school, I take it down to selfishness. To me, I think all sin is selfishness. If you have, I can't think of anything that, that is a sin that, that couldn't be brought all the way down to like pride, selfishness. What about me? It's I, I, you steal something because somebody else has something and I want it. You know, so to me, it's, it's all about selfishness. <clears throat> and, and selfishness is the exact opposite of being submissive. I'll let that sink in for a minute. So the, when I started talking about submitting to authorities and you go, well, I don't like that subject, that's your pride rising up. OK, that's that's all of us. Don't don't I'm not pointing you out. We all have that. You know, I don't I don't I don't have to submit to that person, you know, but he ain't my leader. You know, that, that's right. Uh, so P Peter begins this subject with reminding us. That, that what he's getting ready to require of us will, how do, how do you word it? Um, it will wage war against your very soul. But he also begins this part of submission with telling you that it's temporary. All right. So he's getting that point across. <clears throat> 
I'm warning you as temporary residents and foreigners, he's telling you, I'm going to ask you to submit here on this earth, but it's not for eternity. You submit now, you'll be rewarded later, which is next week's lesson, right? Next week's lesson is called Christian suffering equals rewards. So your submission now equals to rewards later. That's why he's saying it's temporary. It's necessary. Submission is temporary, but it is necessary. Verse 12 tells us why. Verse 12 says this. Be careful to live, <clears throat> to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then, even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your humble behavior, or I'm sorry, honorable behavior, and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. So, they, so before he even asks you to submit, he tells us a few things. He tells us that it, it's going to wage war against your soul. If you don't, it's only temporary. And he gives us the reason why. And I put the question that is before us is why is submission necessary? And the answer is for your unbelieving neighbors. Now, it won't work every time. You can you can say, well, I'm submitting. I'm doing everything I can. Why ain't they becoming a Christian? So it doesn't work that way. Peter even said or Paul even said, I become all things to all men so that some may be saved. So it isn't going to work all the time. But we submit for our unbelieving neighbors. That's the reason why. And, and Peter calls this honorable behavior. And the the unbelievers will witness that honorable behavior. And the hopes is, is that they will become believers also. They will honor God at judgment day is what it's saying. So the hope is you submit to authority. Your unbelieving neighbors can see it. They will begin to honor God. They will begin to submit to authority. It grows. So remember last week. I said that the best way to please God is to bring people into the family, to, to get people saved, to lead people to Christ. What will make God happy, right? It says that all of heaven rejoice after the one sheep who comes back, right? So you get to lead that sheep back. So that's what it's saying is, that's why it was last week. We're building up to this week of on submission, you want to make God happy, you submit to authorities, your unbelieving neighbors see that. If they give honor to God, you just made your heavenly father happy. Okay, it's kind of a chain reaction here. <clears throat> so that's why we submit. So we're going to get in, into a little deeper into sections of society. And you're going, well, why do I have to do that? I just told you why. It tells you why before. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to read verses 13 and 14. It says that I'm leaving this definition up for a few minutes here, by the way. 13 and 14, it says, for the Lord's sake, respect all human authority, whether it's the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. So we, we are we're still easing into submitting because the NLT says, the NLT, NLT even says to respect. I don't believe that the King James says that, does it? It goes right into submit. Matter of fact, what's the first word in verse 13? Submit yourself. Submit yourself. So, so NLT is kind of still easing us into it, but... We read this and automatically we think here in America, we think Joe Biden king, right? He's he is the king of America, so to say the president. But when this letter was written, this this was written. I'm going to sum it up because they said it was written between 62 to 64. I just like to go in the middle, right? It was written in 63 AD. Who was the emperor of Rome in 63 AD? Nero. Nero. Nero was famous for <laughs> he was famous for martyring Christians. I, I mean, 
tie him to a pole, decapitate him, pour oil in the cavity and light him on fire for a torch so he could see to walk to the bathroom and back. Right. This is this is who Peter is telling the believers to submit to, not to Joe Biden. He's telling them to submit to Nero, to the king. Right. And I put I put some of you might know or some of you <laughs> might not like Biden, but he is absolutely no Nero. He Nero is on the same wavelength as Hitler and Alexander the Great and some of the other murderous kings and emperors or whatever you want to call them, whatever title they had, pharaohs, right? I, I put, let's just backtrack just a tad from where we are so far. Remember again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to ease you into this too, that our submission to rulers here on this earth is only temporary. Remember that? Verse 11, it's only temporary. And the reason why we submit to our rulers is so our unbelieving neighbors might get saved. Does that help make it a little bit more palatable to submit to you? And I, I know there's even, there's even good Christians saying, I'm not going to do anything that man says. You know, talking about a leader. That's not what the Bible's teaching us. Now, I'm not saying what Jerry's teaching you. <laughs> I'm just doing what the Bible says, right? So, it even starts off, verse 13, it says, for the Lord's sake. This isn't for Jerry's sake or your pastor's sake or your church's sake. You do this for the Lord's sake. All right. So moving on. Verse 15. Because we got we still got a lot to cover. Verse 15 says it is God's will. Everybody see that it is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish acquisitions against you. So, you know, Peter and God and everybody realize that they're ignorant means unlearned. They're not that they're stupid, but it, it, ignorant means that they're unlearned. They even know they're ignorant people. But the God's will is that they would be silenced by this. So I put it like this. In God's eyes, we live honorable lives by submitting to other human authorities. When we do. When we do, his will is that it, that will be our defense against what he what Peter calls foolish accusations. Now, just a question that I wrote down, I said, what can supersede God's will? Good answer. <laughs> so here I go. Next first, next first verse also mixes in grace with this because we need grace to be able to submit. Right. We can't do this under our own human power. Don't go out and go, OK, I'm going to go out there and submit. You know, you need the Holy Spirit to do this. So so P Peter also reminds us that we can't abuse grace by not submitting. You could say, well, I, you know, I'll not submit. I'll bow up in the back and beat was it <laughs> stiff necked people will not. I will not submit. But, you know, I asked for forgiveness and I was forgiven. Right. That's that's what verse 16 covers. Verse 16 says, for you are free, right? We are free, yet you are, you are God's slaves. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. So now he's even went so far as to call not submitting, the stiff neckness as being evil. Grace has set us free and we are free indeed. However, we are not to use that freedom in a, as a reason or an excuse not to submit. Again, we're not talking about submitting to God now. We're talking about submitting to human authority. Do we like to submit? No. Do we want to live honorable lives before God? So one last verse before we move into some more specific uh, parts of society submitting. Uh, uh, I should put submissive relationships uh, and uh, this will kind of put everything into a perspective on verse 17. And here we go. I, I, I kind of like the order. It says respect everyone. That's respect everyone. Love your Christian brothers and sisters. Fear God 
and respect the king. So <clears throat> taught teenagers for years, years and years. Whenever you teach them to obey their mom and dad, what do you think the first question they ask me? What, what if they ask me to sin? What if my mom and dad t tells me to, you know, get drunk or you know, like anybody's mom and dad says, all right, boy, I told you once, I told you a million times, drink that and get drunk, you know. So, but, you know, what if my mom and dad tells me to sin? Well, this verse says you fear God. You, you respect your, your authority, which means if they do ask you to sin. So I, this was one of the arguments I got this week. Well, what if your king tells you to take the mark of the beast? What do you do then? <laughs> you don't take the mark of the beast. Why? Because I'm afraid of God more than I'm afraid of you. <laughs> you know, so so of course, that's that's uh, that's really a dumb approach to it. Don't don't go. What if my what if your ruler asks you to do something that that you feel is a sin? You don't do it. You're, you fear God. That's a reverence. You fear God. But you still have respect for your king. You don't go out and say, you know, well, he's, he's ignorant. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to say something a lot worse, but I didn't. Anyways. All right. So that, that is the perspective is uh, uh, we fear God more than anything. All right. Now, here we go. Verse 18. Now we are going to start into a section that's on slaves. Now I know, well, I wrote it like this. In most of the world today, slavery no longer exists. Now I know you can say, well, what about, you know, but in most of the world, there's no such thing as open slavery. Okay. But these verses do apply to relationships today where one person is in charge of another. I, I, wrote, I actually wrote it a little different. I put, but these verses apply to any relationship where one person is in charge and the other one must report. Kind of know where I'm going, right? I'm going to read verses 18 and 19. You who are slaves must accept the authority of your masters with all respect. Do what they tell you. Not only, and this was another argument to this week, that the, the person actually thought I, would, I made this verse up, that I was adding to the Bible when I read this. Do what they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, but even if they are cruel. Verse 19. For God is pleased. Uh, everybody hearing me? For God is pleased with you when you do what you know is right and patiently endure unfair treatment. God is pleased when you do what, it, what you know is right and you endure unfair treatment. I know that's, this is really good stuff, ain't it? No, no amen stuff here, is there? All right. So look, so now, now we know that, that submitting to human authority pleases God. Now you know it's right. That's what it says here in this verse. It says it says that uh, da, 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 da. for God is pleased when you, with you when you do what is right. So now it's the right thing to do is to submit to human authority and not only when they are kind but when they are cruel. This takes grace. Right? God showed grace to us whenever we was still cruel, wasn't he? So, verse 20. It says, of course, you get no credit for being patient when you are beating for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. So, in other words, if you go out and you rob somebody and they beat you and you say, I'm going to patiently endure this suffering. No. No. You deserved it. <laughs> this is this is if you uh, uh, suffer for doing good. OK, so so I put I put note what is pleasing God here. It 
It isn't if the master is kind or cruel. That's not what pleases God. What pleases him is if the believer patiently endures the suffering. 21, ah, 21a. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's got a little piece at the end that brings you into the next verse. But 21, it says, everybody take a deep breath again. 21 says, for God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Just as Christ suffered for you. OK, read that part again, because <clears throat> it isn't fun stuff to hear. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. So this is what I wrote. God, uh, God not only is asking us to patiently endure suffering, he also shows us how to do it. He leads by example. And that's the, the rest of verse 21. And I'm going to read uh, 22 also. It says, here is your example. Remember I said God leads by example. Here's your example. And you must follow his steps. He never sinned, nor ever deceived anyone. So it, it, it's just starting off with saying, this is Jesus, if you ain't figured it out yet. And I know you have. But verse 22 is just saying, He's perfectly innocent, right? He didn't do anything to deserve this. He never sinned. He never deceived anyone. Verse 23, he did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. So he never lashed back. He never, he never tried to take matters into his own hands. Verse 24, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right by his wounds you are healed so he suffered this is what Peter is getting to he suffered not for his own benefit why did he suffer for other people's gains so that we can be saved by his by his wounds we are healed so why is God asking you to submit to authority and suffer so that your unbelieving neighbors can see this and honor God? Don't forget, we, we, had, we have the same motive as Jesus had, that others may be saved. OK, verse 25, it says, once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. So because someone was willing to suffer for others. Jesus, he was willing to suffer for others, and that was us. Jesus was willing to suffer for us, so we have turned to our shepherd only because of that, right? So this continues to be the big picture, the outcome of why God is asking us to submit to human authority so that some may be saved, to be, that we can turn to him as the guardian of our souls. That's still the reason. And I know that you got my drift when I was talking about when someone is in charge and someone has to report. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm using, you can say, a boss and an employee, a mom or a dad. You know, I, I, I still obey my mom. My mom tells me to do something unless I just go, Mom, I, I can't possibly do that. I mean, she says, Jerry, come here and, and do this. I do it. You know, because I'm still submitting to her. You submit to church authority, your pastor. Again, fear God. You submit to the government. <laughs> I had to choke on that myself. You, you, you submit to the government. You respect the government, but you fear God. If they ask you to do something that's a sin, you don't do it. All right? Big collectively. Take a big deep breath. Because the next one gets rougher. Now, see, all looking at your Bible. If you're following along, at home, I'm getting ready to step in First Peter chapter three. And here we go. This is another relationship. <laughs> this is another relationship where where one is called to be the in authority and another one is called to submit to that authority. Who 
All right, so let's let's just dive into. Uh, did I say that I don't want to teach this? <laughs> Here I go. Um, verse chapter three, verse one begins on the topic of wives. And, and remember, we just talked about slaves. Verse one, chapter three, verse one starts off with these words in the same way. So everything that we said about slaves submitting to their masters, a person of authority, all that applies to the wife. In the same way. In the same way. You wives must accept the authority of your husbands. And, 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 you know, don't freak out on me. Here we go. Then, even if some do refuse to obey the good news, that's the husbands, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. So, so here we go. We have the same big picture that we've been talking about all evening. And that picture that big picture is wives. It says you must submit to your husband. And the reason why is because if your husband refuses to obey or listen to the good news, it said that they still might have a chance of getting saved by watching your conduct. That's the reason why. Same big picture. Why did Jesus suffer? So that others would be saved. Why does a slave submit to a master? So that their unbelieving neighbors can be saved. Why does a wife submit to their husband? So the husband may submit or be saved. All right. Verse two, chapter three, verse two. It says, <clears throat> they will be won over. I'm, I'm kind of getting that off of verse one. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. So verse two says that yours, I'm talking to the wives, that your obedience is pure and reverent. Whenever you submit to the authority of your husband in God's eyes, pure and reverent. So your obedience isn't for the benefit of your husband. He may try to rub your nose in it. I've already seen some of them go, you need to listen to this part, right? That is not for your husband's benefit. It's for your relationship with God. Your relationship is pure and reverent whenever you do this. Not your husband's. It isn't between you and your husband. It's between you and God. The big picture, right? Big picture, lead people to Jesus, even your husband. I'm going to read verses three and four. It says, don't be concerned about your outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourself instead with the beauty that comes from within the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. I really like that Bible verse or two verses. And, and I put it like this. Look, ladies, I know the people take that verse to the extreme. It's not saying that that primping, can I say primp? That primping is a sin. It's not saying that. But, it, but however, what makes a woman beautiful is, it, it, I put, um, let me read what I, I wrote, that way I won't mess it up. What makes a woman beautiful in God's eyes isn't about what she looks like on the outside, but it's what's on the inside. Is that okay to say it like that? Did I do okay? Okay. So I think I should also note that there are two attributes that were pointed out here. A gentle and quiet spirit. And I'll, I'll take a picture of this and put it on Facebook, let you guys see. My notes say, and like Forrest Gump, that's all I got to say about that. Verse 5. <clears throat> verse 5. Chapter 3, verse 5 says this. This is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. This is how. Ready? They trusted God and they accepted the authority of their husbands. Two things. 
I said, now we have two more attributes, trust God and accept the authority of their husbands. So just as a memory aid, here I go. Let me list them up here so that you can see them for yourself. The four things that it told us in those few verses. And again, I'm not being a smart aleck whatsoever. I'm just really trying to be a good Bible teacher here. And, 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 and ladies, whenever you, we, well, let me say it like this. As believers, we hear a sermon that's something that, that the Bible is telling us that something we have to do or not do. You know, it might be on gifts. Are you using your gifts that God given you or whatever? The, that we are, we are to hold ourselves accountable. We're to look in the mirror and kind of grade ourselves on how we're doing, right? Not being a smart aleck, but ladies, you can look over this list for yourself. Do a self-examination and think of what you are doing well at and what you might need work on. But ladies, <laughs> Peter doesn't leave you here with this list. He wants to give you a quick example. And in verse six, he says this, for instance, so here's your example. For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him her master. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what other, of, I'm sorry, let me, let me get this right. Let me start over on verse six. For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him her master. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. Think about that. So again, it isn't about if you're, what your husband, if he, I can go back to the verse on the slaves and masters. Remember it says, don't do, don't do right if they're kind but also if they're cruel, I kind of think that's what Peter is, is coming out here and saying without saying, you know, of course, we're not talking about any kind of abuse or anything crazy like that. Right. Call the police on them. But but this is that that you do what is right without fear. All right. I only got one more verse. How do I do on time this week? Oh, thank you, Lord, that it's short. OK, so I got one more verse. And guess who we get to talk about? Husbands get one verse. Verse seven. <laughs> I know. It. I know it isn't. It isn't. So let me read my notes on six just to make sure I don't miss anything. I said, so the word picture here about Sarah is she submitted herself to Abraham even to the point that she called him master. And in King James, it says, Lord, Lord with a lowercase l. I know, bow up in the back. Yeah, ain't nobody likes it, is there? You're all looking around like, will we kill him now or later? So anyhow, husbands, we don't, we don't get left out. We, get one, we do get one verse. Verse seven says, in the same way, Everything that is applied to slaves with their masters, to wives with husbands, now also apply to the husband. So we didn't get left out. That's why, that's why we only got one verse is because he's already explained it once and he's just saying that same thing applies to you, right? In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are. That's a physical strength. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. In other words, she's going to get to go to heaven and get just the rewards that, that, that the husband is. Okay. Treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. All right. So here I go. <laughs> Verse seven, it says, uh, so, so wives, they're to submit to their husbands and that if it is a one sided submission and, and I know, I, I know of this happening. I know a, a Christian lady who was married to a, a uh, I, I'll just use the word Henri, an Henri guy. And and she 
she submitted to her husband and she would tell you, I'm doing it only because the Bible tells me to, you know, and and it, it was it's very hard. This is how I worded it in my notes. I put a one sided submission is very, 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 very difficult. That is why the husbands we are we are in a position where we can make this easy on our wives. We could make this submission. Uh, um, I, I put we can help our wives have that inner beauty that God wants her to have. We can make her job much, much easier by giving her honor. OK, still, still just trying to be a good Bible teacher. I would also like to remind husbands that Paul said in Ephesians chapter five that a husband's they, they are to love their wives as Christ loved the church. And what was Jesus willing to do? He was willing to suffer for his for his bride. He was willing to suffer for the church. Husbands, you can do the same thing. You can do that self-examination and ask yourself, are you honoring your wife in that capacity? Are you making it easy for her to submit? Right. I want to point out one last point of this. <laughs> No, this isn't a his or her thing. This is all of us submitting, right? So look, I want to point out one other, the, the last part of that verse. Because it said, it said in the end of verse 7, the last sentence in, my, in the NLT, it says, treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. That's what I wanted to point out. Men, if you want your prayers to be heard by God, you must honor your wives. If you don't, you're just talking to the ceiling. So that means if you're not treating your wife with honor, you're not making that submission easy on her. If you're not willing to do what Christ did for the church, if you're not willing to do it for your wife, whenever somebody comes up front at our church and wants prayer, you just stay at your seat because your prayers are not being heard anyways. Might as well get off the prayer chains. <laughs> or if anybody asks you, would you pray for me? You might as well just say, no, God ain't listening anyways. Right? That's how important this is, man. I'm seeing if messages pop up. <laughs> so anyhow, that, I, I, I'm not leaving. Uh, ladies, did I do okay with the men? D didn't let them off the hook, did I? All right. So... So that is the three segments that 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 Peter points out about submitting. Slaves, wives, husbands. Actually, we started off with everyone. He just went into a little bit more detail with those three. So look, everyone has to submit to authority. Slaves submit to masters, wives submit to their husbands. We all submit to kings and rulers. So next week, we're going, we are going to continue the lovely subject of submitting, but it's going to take just a little different turn. And I'll get to that at the very end. But, but before I leave, I'll just do a real quick summary. And I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I'm not going to do a nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts is to learn how to apply what we've learned into your lives. We've been talking about submitting. If you don't know what submission is, well, I, read the, I read the definition to you. If you go, well, I don't understand how to submit, you're lying to yourself. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to do a nuts and bolts because this is all practical, submitting, right? But I will do a summary. And here I go. God knows that, that we, his children or his church, we are going to suffer at the hands of this evil and wicked world. This world hated Jesus. It's going to hate us because we follow Jesus, right? Jesus said those words. God not only asks us to endure suffering, but he also is asking us to do it with honor and dignity by respecting those people who, who bring suffering upon us, if that's the person of, of authority. See, we do that. We, we suffer with honor and dignity. We do that by submitting to those who have authority over us. 
be it the government official, be it a mom and dad, be it a, a boss at work, or be a husband. We achieve these again. Rem memory, remember summary. We do this for two reasons. Number one, number one reason. I'm going to go and read that to you. Chapter 2, verse 19, it tells us that we do this because it pleases the Father. Let me read 19 to you. It says, For God is pleased with you when you do what you know is right and patiently endure unfair treatment. See, this pleases our Heavenly Father. That's why you submit. Number two, number two reason why is so that unbelievers may be honored. I, I, I kind of beat that in the ground, but, but that has to be our driving force. Chapter two, verse 12. It says, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. That's their judgment seat. How do they give honor to God when they serve him? So it's talking about people getting saved. So why? For, first of all, first and foremost, I could have stopped there. It pleases your heavenly father. He and it says, this pleases God when you do this. That should be enough. But he goes a step further and tells you that so your unbelieving neighbors may get saved. Right? Is it easy? Heck no. There's people who will go to hell because they will not submit to God or maybe even authority. But check this out. Was, was the cross easy? No. That was obedience. That was Jesus submitting. One more verse. I'm going to reread chapter 2, verse 21. For God called you to do good even if it means suffering just as Christ has suffered for you. So he's called you to do good regardless, just the way Jesus did. Submission that flies in the face of our flesh. We bow up. But if you strive to be an obedient child of God, submission is a must. You can't obey God and not submit at the same time. But remember, we'll start we'll go all the way back to chapter 2, verse 11, wasn't it? Is that where we started? Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residences and foreigners, this is only temporary. Just asking you to, to, to do this for a little while. Okay? It's only temporary. So look, next week, we are, it's going to kind of a reason why I wanted to break us up because I know that this is a tough subject, really tough. But, but next week is going to be part two. And the whole title is part two of the conduct of God's people in the midst of suffering. And it's going to be at the bottom. And it says, I know you can't really see it, it says part two, Christian suffering equals rewards. So you're going to be rewarded for what God is asking you to do. You do what he tells you, you be obedient. He's going to reward you. And that's what we're going to look at next week when we start with chapter three, verse eight, if I remember right. OK, so I'm still alive. Let's hurry up and pray. Father, God, we love you. and We thank you. Look, we know that this is tough, Lord, and we need your spirit to do these things, Lord. This is this is this is not the milk. <laughs> this is not the milk. This is the meat. This is hard to swallow, Lord. But, but we can do this with your help, your spirit. We can follow you and uh, we, can, we can follow the example that Jesus has set before us. Keep it in mind. It's temporary, Lord. We do this because it pleases you and we do this so that our unbelieving neighbors can see this and maybe they will give their hearts to you also. That's our, that's our motives and that's our goal, Lord. So let us not walk out these doors and take this subject lightly. Let us not be smart alecks on the way home. Did you, hear, did you hear what he said? You gotta do this. That's not the point here, Lord. Our point is to help each other honor you, to please you. That's what brothers and sisters are to do, right? Brothers, sisters in the church, we are to, uh, edify each other and, and to, to 
encourage each other to be more obedient to you. So, Father, we do this as your obedient children, even the husband and wife, that we are standing behind each other, uh, uh, spurring each other is a word that uses in your word. We spur each other to uh, do good. So we love you, Lord. Be with us. Help us keep the kingdom of God first in our life. You take care of the junk. Be with our families. Protect us from this stupid, stupid pandemic, Lord. And uh, uh, just we love you. All those who are watching that on Facebook, we pray that God blesses you. And uh, uh, hope to see you next week for part two. In Jesus' name, amen.